Hey, hi, um, it's uh, evening, so apologies for the lighting. I have indeed finished the last book for the shortlist of the Forward Prize uh, for Poetry. The book is Sonnets for Albert by Anthony Joseph. And it's a really interesting one to finish up on. To finish up on. Um, a little bit about Anthony Joseph. He was born in Trinidad, um, moved to the United Kingdom, lives, I think, in London now. Uh, yes, he lives in London now. He's a, he's a writer of prose as well as poetry. Um, he's an academic and a musician. So I will leave a couple of links down below, one to his website, the other one to a really interesting YouTube video he made with a couple of his musician friends in which they improvise music as he reads uh, some, of the, some of his poems. They uh, seem to be earlier drafts of the poems in this book um, but uh, pretty, more or less the same poems. And then at the very end, if you want to uh, hear him speak a little bit about the background to the sonnets, he had it as a, a, an interview. Um, in that interview, you'll see that he wears these, uh, these fantastic large silver rings on his, most of his fingers. And one of the pivotal, I feel, sonnets in this book of 50 plus sonnets is actually called Rings. And I bring it up because I, I just, I went out for dinner and uh, just came back and during dinner, I started talking about this, this book. And one of the first things I talked about was the rings. And I realized that it's really stuck with me how uh, there's a certain bond between a father and a son that is always there, even if the father is an absolute shit. <laughs> and in this case, the father, Albert, is, and this is basically a memoir in sonnet form. So the father, Albert, basically deserts all of his children. He goes from woman to woman, has many sons and daughters, and just leaves as quickly as he arrived. And the poet himself, Anthony Joseph, really, he says in one of the sonnets that he really only saw his father maybe twice a year at best. And here he is after his father's death, and the death of the father really begins the, the narrative arc, for want of a better <laughs> phrase, of the book. Uh, the death of the father begins the book. And there's a mention of his rings, and there's a mention of Anthony Joseph taking the rings, you know, for himself as his inheritance in a way. And one of his brothers, who is somewhat less forgiving of their father, he decides to take a chain. And there's a sense, a sense of symbolism, I felt in that poem at the very end with the talk of the chain. And the brother who wasn't able to forgive and would probably never dream of writing an entire book of poetry about his father. And, and he's in a way chained, chained to, the, to the sad memories. While Anthony Joseph lives with the memory of his father on his fingers, and they, even in the interview they click as he's talking. And Anthony Joseph is a very charismatic man from just seeing him read his poems and then in the interview, 
he's you know he's, he's clearly a very charismatic man and there's uh, something i i feel of his father or at least the way he imagined imagined and imagines his father through the sonnets as being a charismatic man who can really get away with anything he can get any job um he can get away with stealing money from his you know colleagues or employees if if need be he can get away with returning to his own mother time and time again and uh, being a kid for uh, like a uh, a sweet dumpling is the way is the way it's put in one of the sonnets um you know women flock to him he uh, at one point uh, becomes a reverend and a religious leading figure and women swoon over him even more and all this time anthony joseph is brought up by his grandmother his father's mother and rarely sees him and and he says uh, very clearly within this book that the absence of his father led to a mythologizing of the personality of of the missing father and uh, i suppose you know to the father's credit he never physically or emotionally abused any of his family members but that's really a very low bar to say well at least he didn't beat them or sexually abuse them so he's all, he's a good father there's no there's really no judgment in this book and there's very little anger and uh, not much passion either it's a methodical way that Anthony Joseph has discovered to work through these issues for himself in a very positive way and he brings up memories that he has he questions whether they are true memories or not he does not shy away from describing the realities of his um of his you know the the the, the lack of the father and at the same time there's this really really strong sense of love and uh, it also reminded me of a virtual workshop i had done earlier this week um with taimba jess who is an amazing uh poet who won the pulitzer prize and he the workshop was on the blues and i asked him at one point when he read a specific poem that really discussed the relationship between the uh between the boy and the father i'll i'll link that um i forget what it's called but i'll link it i believe it's by a poet whose last name is hayden but i'll i'll double check that anyway the the poem he said felt to him like it was based in a kind of blues genre and there was a question about one word in the middle of the poem that might have hinted to the father not being quite as wonderful as the other parts of the poem showed him to be and i brought that up and i also added the question of whether because i'm really new to learning about the blues and so i asked I asked Jess, do the blues always have a happy ending? And uh, and his answer was um, was just really helpful to me because he said, no, it's not about the ending; it's about the process. It's it's about the process of working through things that are difficult, working through through those things via your music, via your words, and then I come across this this book Sonnets for Albert and I feel like there's a little bit of the blues there as well and uh, I was really thankful that I had that workshop the sonnets are generally very loose generally 14 lines there are you know there, there are some rules that are followed and sometimes not and, and it doesn't really matter uh, it jumps around in time past present imagined future a little bit and 
That reminded me a little bit of Diane Zeus's uh, book of sonnets called Frank Sonnets that I um, have, a, have previously discussed in a previous video. If you want to scroll down, you'll find that. These sonnets are not as finely crafted by any means as Diane Zeus's, but they have their own rhythm. And I found myself very pleasantly propelled forward wanting to find out more and more about the father and then realizing that what we're really doing is finding out more and more about the the poet about anthony joseph um he now is the father of of daughters i believe at least one is an is, is an adult daughter and i'd be really interested in the next book he writes if he if he does write further books of poems if they are about his role as a father to young women, I think that would be really, you know, I'd definitely buy that book. So in a way it's a, it's a quietly, it, it's a quietly powerful book. From my personal perspective, it really, really annoys me. <laughs> Just on a purely personal note, that a father can get away with so little. I mean, literally doing almost nothing, nothing for the, for his son, and yet have an entire book of gorgeous sonnets written really in his honor. And uh, I mean, you know, I come from a I come from a different perspective. Um, I have known in my life only the best fathers, grandfathers, uncles. I mean, you, all my male role models were just superb. So my bar is, is raised very, very high. <laughs> and uh, this doesn't even come close to, to anything like uh, being even a father, just, uh, just, and, and yet, you know, here I am, uh, seeing it from a different perspective, um, or at least trying to. Of course, being a woman, I see it from a woman's perspective as well. I'm really annoyed at the the fact that the grandma didn't get a whole book of sonnets. But you know, uh, that's probably another another whole story. And the mother who disappeared. And as you can see, I'm, I'm talking a lot about subject matter here, about what the poems are about and what the book is about, because this is a memoir kind of nonfiction book. And it's, it is all about the subject matter. Much more, much more than the, the form and, and the poetry. And there's something that is very liberating to have that as the fifth and last book that I, you know, I'm discussing here. Um, it's almost like discussing a book of prose. Um, of course, the musicality of the book is very interesting because the poet himself is a musician. So, so there's that, but, um, it's more the subject matter than intrigued me. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Uh, that's the end of the series. Um, I'm not sure if I want to talk about which book I think will win or which book I'd like to win. I think it would be interesting for this book to win, this last book that I discussed, Sonnets for Albert. Because in my mind, uh, Poetry Prizes, or at least from what I can tell, the Forward Poetry Prize, is not so much there to point a finger at uh, the best poems, because, this, I mean, is there such a thing? I'm not sure. But I think the prize is there to, to serve whatever poet wins, and the winning poet then serves the forward prize in a in a way um, by getting the forward prize a book like sonnets for albert would really get more attention and more attention and it deserves it 
I think uh, the two Americans in the list, Akaba and and McRae, have already have a lot of attention. They're really well known. Um, they're very well established. They don't really need another prize. I think McRae's book reads more like a sequel than a standalone, which you know, which might get in the way of new readers to that particular book. Um, the Akbar book, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not really, I wasn't really convinced by it. It felt really erratic to me. And then the two uh, other British uh, writers, um, yeah. I'm not sure about the two of them. In a way, they have melded into one in my memory, which is bad, I know. Um, I really need to go back and, and, and take another look. You know, I feel, I feel guilt when I, <laughs> I feel guilty when I don't like books, but I didn't really, yeah, I really didn't like the, the illustrated woman and uh, all the men I never married. I felt like they were, as a woman, that I was meant to like them maybe, but they felt very one dimensional and they felt somewhat similar to each other. And they, they didn't stand out enough from each other. So my, my money's on Anthony Joseph's Sonnets for Albert. I think winning the prize would mean that not only would he get more attention, uh, it would also allow for a lot of interesting discussion about the role of fathers to sons, um, about uh, what it's like to be, you know, um, I forgot to mention, I think, that uh, you know, there, there is also the, the theme of, of being an immigrant, of coming from Trinidad and leaving your family behind and going back and certain stereotypes um, that might or might not be in play with, you know, how to be a father and what makes a good father. Um, so I think a lot of interesting discussion would come of it. And then of course, there's the musical side of it, which is so interesting because the improvising of the music with poetry is something I haven't come across a lot uh, before. So that's where I'm standing. My money's on Sonnets for Albert. Okay, I'm going to see if I can read a poetry book a day this month. Although by the look of me, I'm, I'm so tired already. Um, Okay, don't forget the only real property is the property of the mind. And I'll see you next time. Uh, if you played along, thank you. And uh, pop a comment in if you think one of the other books maybe will win or if you completely disagree with me. Always looking for a good disagreement as well as agreement. Um, I'm open to any comments. Thank you again. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.